Welcome students for experiment 2 of Digital IC Design Lab. In this lab, we are going to perform dynamic characteristics of inverter and extract resistance of MOSFET, propagation delay and input capacitance. So now, let us look into the objective. The first objective is to extract the resistance of MOSFET. The second one is to compute the propagation delay of inverter. The third is to identify the appropriate sizing of PMOS to achieve an equal rise time and fall time. The fourth is to extract the input capacitance of inverter. So related to this experiment, there will be four videos addressing each of the objectives. Here in this video, I am going to cover the first objective, equivalent resistance computation. First, let us try to understand some brief theory about the resistance of the MOSFET and then later we will try to extract it. So normally when a MOSFET is operated in a deep linear region then one could model the on resistance of your MOSFET as 1 upon Kn dash W by L VGS minus VT and this expression when you plot it with respect to VGS you could able to see that there is a large variation of resistance. There is nothing but the resistance is a function of input voltage. But for computation purposes, it is always preferred to have an equivalent resistance such that it eases the manual computation of delays. The schematic that is shown here would help us to evaluate the equivalent resistance computation. So initially, I'm going to consider that the capacitor that has been fixed to the drain of NMOS is charged to VDD that is nothing but 1.8 volt and now when the input of the NMOS is switched from logic value 0 to logic value 1 then the channel will be created and the transistor would turn on the output capacitance would start discharging through this particular path all the way to the ground now here is a picture that depicts the operation of what has been discussed here okay so when the VGS switches from 0 to 1 then the charge that is stored on our capacitor leaks off after a particular delay so schematically it's been shown uh, like this okay so the time difference between the 50 percent of VGS that has turned on or from 0 to 1 to 50% of output that is discharged from logic value 1 to 0 is taken as TPDF where TPDF represents the propagation delay of a falling output transition here. Now one could extract this TPDF data from the simulation. Now once this data has been extracted then what we can do is we can make use of this expression which is nothing but a linear first order RC delay to evaluate the equivalent resistance value. Similarly, one can even perform the same type of operation or the procedure for the extraction of PMOS equivalent resistance as well. Here, one should note that the output capacitance is initially discharged to logic value 0. Okay, So the initial condition across the capacitor is basically a zero volt and the moment when we have a gate input that switches from logic value 1 to 0 then the PMOS would be on and it will try to charge up the output capacitor and one could extract the TPDR just because the output is rising okay we have a different parameter which is TPDR and one could extract this particular parameter from the simulation and one could use this particular formula to extract the equivalent resistance of the PMOS. So now, let us focus on the simulation to extract the resistance values. So now, I am going to create a new cell named as resistance of channel of NMOS. Okay, so RCH NMOS. Okay and make sure that you select your library appropriately. So here my library is going to be DICD and I've just provided some name. Okay, So just click OK and this should bring up your schematic editor. 
So now inside the schematic editor, we have to bring our NMOS from GPDK 180 nanometer technology. And make sure that you select the symbol as your view and click close and click on hide and place your transistor somewhere in the mid. So once this is done, we need to still have to place the V pulse and our output capacitor and which could be taken from analog lib. So just navigate to analog lib and select cap for the capacitor and click close here and here you could be able to see that the capacitance value has to be changed from from 1 to 0.5 picofarad and there is an initial condition so here is where we have to specify the initial voltage value so I have specified here as 1.8 as the initial or the initial voltage across the capacitance so the next thing is we need to bring our V pulse so since I know the cell name I just directly type here and you or one could actually go to the browse button and select the V pulse so click somewhere you know to make the changes across the parameter list and here basically a V pulse need to have two y axis value and two x axis values okay so in the case of y axis we have one of the voltage as zero the other voltage supposed to be 1.8 and as I said before we also have to specify two x axis value which is nothing but the time period now the first parameter that we have to define with respect to x axis is the time period of on off so here I'm going to specify it as 20 n with so make sure that there is no spacing between the 20 and the n okay both are values and do not add any unit to it the tool will automatically add to it and the next x parameter that I have to specify or the x value that I have to specify is our pulse width so since we are interested in in 50% duty cycle I'm going to specify this to be 10 nano so this 10 nano is actually specifies the on period of our 20 nanosecond total time period okay so once this is done click on hide and fix this somewhere closer to the gate so the last component that is required is nothing but our ground which which one could take it from the same analog library since because these are non-technological components so once the schematic is drawn click on check and save and now click on launch ADEL so this should bring analog design environmental tool for us now basically this window has uh, three sub windows okay out of that we are going to see the first two for this first objective and later on we'll talk about this third window okay so now in general the analysis window actually specifies the x axis of your plot and the output sub window in general will specify the y axis of your plot so now since we need to extract PDF, we have to choose the transient as our analysis and specify a stop period of closer to 20 yen okay and click on outputs to be plotted select on schematic since we want to plot the y-axis in terms of voltage select the output wire as well as the input wire and press escape and then get back to ADE and then click on this play button and here you could be able to see that the input is actually making a transition from 0 to 1 and the output is actually making a transition from 1 to 0 so now that we have to measure the time difference between the input 50% and the output 50% transitions so to do that click on this tools click on calculator and make sure that you clear your buffer as well as the stack by clicking on this on this button and then you select the delay function from the function panel sub window so here the signal 1 actually specifies the input and signal 2 has to specify the output signals so make sure 
you select the radio wave and select the input wave and once you select this should automatically fill up the signal 1 option here similarly make sure your mouse pointer is pointing to signal 2 and select the output wave from the graph and that should automatically fill in the signal 2 option here now we will talk discuss about the other parameters that are listed at the bottom the first one is the threshold so since our input is actually making a transition from 0 to 1.8 the mid value of that is actually 0 0.9 and that is what has been specified the threshold value 2 is with respect to the output signal which is nothing but the signal 2 okay so this is again making a transition from 1.8 to 0 and the mid value of it is actually 0 0.9 and the edge number 1 is basically there are various edges that happens across our input okay so in this case there is a rising transition and this refers to edge number 1 1 and whereas edge number 2 is actually with respect to the output and the output is actually making a trans falling transition and there is only one edge with respect to falling and we have to set accordingly those numbers so I am specifying edge number 1 as 1 to denote this particular edge and edge number 2 as number 1 to denote this particular edge and make sure the edge types are set appropriately you could be able to see that the input is actually making a rising transition so the edge type 1 should be reflecting that and similarly edge 2 type 2 should reflect the falling transition as the output is making a falling transition here so once this is all been set click on apply and click on this evaluate button so this should bring up the TPD F value which is nothing but 408.3 pico seconds now one could use this particular formula with the value of TPDF that we have measured which is 408 uh, pico second and the value of C is 0.5 pico farad and use this particular formula to evaluate the equivalent distance of our in mass by the same similar experiment just having this as your schematic and setting the initial condition of our capacitor to zero one could do the same type of similar experiment to compute the value of TPDR and use this particular formula to evaluate the resistance value of your PMOS